Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calumsod, Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. Magtipon, awitan ang Panginoon, sabihin sa himain, pagliligtas niya sa akin, sabihin sa himain, pagliligtas niya sa akin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of the dedication of the Lateran Basilica in Rome. We thank the Lord for the gift of His Church. And we are reminded today that the Church is composed of living stones founded on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this feast, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory 
with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, God in, in the, the highest, highest. And, and on earth, earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we, we give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly, heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who from living and chosen stones prepare an eternal dwelling for your majesty, increase in your church the spirit of grace you have bestowed, so that by new growth, your faithful people may build up the heavenly Jerusalem. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the southern side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to end to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the southern side. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district, down upon the Arabah, and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The waters of the river gladden the city of God the holy dwelling of the Most High. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore, we fear not, though the earth be shaken and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst, it shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, 
the holy dwelling of the Most High. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one that is there, namely Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroy God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for His word. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate this great feast of the dedication of the Lateran Basilica, an important church in Rome because it is the cathedral of the Pope as Bishop of Rome. That is why in the universal church, this is a feast. We are remembering 
the important church of the Lateran Basilica because it is the cathedral of the Holy Father in Rome. But my dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the feast of the Basilica of the Lateran in Rome, we are taught today by our readings that what we are celebrating is not just a structure. What we are celebrating is the church as the living body of Christ. Ang mga pagbasa po natin ngayong araw na ito, mga kapatid, ay nagtuturo po sa atin na ang simbahan ay hindi lamang isang bato, kundi ang simbahan ay ang katawan ni Kristo na buhay. Our first reading today is an image or a vision of the prophet Ezekiel that the temple is alive. Although it is made up of stones, in the vision of the prophet Ezekiel, water is flowing out of the temple, telling him and reminding him that the temple of God is truly alive. Sa unang pagbasa ay narinig natin ang templo sa pangitain ni Ezekiel ay may truong tubig na dumadaloy. Patunay na ang templo ng Diyos ay hindi lamang binubuo ng bato, kundi ang templo ng Diyos ay buhay. And in our second reading today, from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, St. Paul was reminding the church in Corinth, he said, You are God's building. You are God's temple. It is not the stones. It is not the structure. It is you. That is why the temple of God is alive. Pinapaalala ni San Pablo sa atin na tayo rin ay mga templo ng Diyos. Kaya ang templo ay buhay sapagkat tayo ang templo ng Diyos. And in our gospel passage today, Jesus was reminding also us that we are the temple of God and this new temple being built by Jesus is His own body composed by us, the living stones of this temple. Ang turo po ni Jesus sa kanyang mga alagad, ang bagong templo na kanyang itinatayo ay ang templo ng kanyang katawan. That is why the temple of God is alive because it is the body of Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are reminded that the church is alive. Buhay ang simbahan. Kaya po mapapansin ninyo, halimbawa ko, mayroong dumaan na bagyo. At halimbawa, nasa lanta ang isang probinsya. Ang simbahan po natin ay agad-agad na kumikilos. Kumukuha ng mga donasyon at ipinapadala natin doon sa probinsya kung saan nasalanta sila ng bagyo. Kasi ang simbahan ay buhay. Kapag ang simbahan ay wala ng pakialam sa mga kapatid niya sa mga lugar na nasalanta ng bagyo, nako, ang simbahan ay patay, hindi nakakaramdam. Kaya yung mga pinapadala minsan na mga panalangin, mga mass intentions, pagdarasal, 
lakat ito ay nagpapatunay na ang simbahan ay buhay. Sometimes I receive messages of people asking for prayers. Just yesterday, I received a message from a friend who was asking for prayers because she was sick. At ito ay nakakaapekto sa pagdarasal natin. Nararamdaman natin na ang bawat isa sa atin ay kinakailangang ipagdasal natin. Patunay po ito na ang simbahan ay buhay. Kaya po mga kapatid, pasensya na po minsan kung ang simbahan ay nagsasalita, kung ang simbahan minsan ay napapatanong, kung ang simbahan minsan ay dumadaing, patunay lang ito na ang simbahan ay buhay. Ang simbahan ay nakakakita. Ang simbahan ay nakakaramdam. Ang simbahan ay nakikita anuman ang pinagdaraanan ng mga tao. Sapagkat sabi nga ni Jesus, ang simbahan, ang templo ay ang kanyang katawan. That is why in our gospel passage today, when Jesus saw that the temple was being abused, He spoke to the Pharisees, He spoke to the money changers, He spoke to those who were making the temple area a marketplace, and He drove them out of the temple. Jesus spoke to them because the temple is His body. The temple is alive. My dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate today this Eucharist in honor of the Lateran Basilica in Rome, let us remember that the church is composed of living stones. The church is alive. The church continually prays for each one because the church can see the church can feel, the church can think, and the church will always act. The church is always alive. Amen. Please stand. Our Savior dwells within the living temple of His Church. A baptized people gathered around the successor of St. Peter. We pray to our Father, inspired by the Holy Spirit. For every petition, let us say, Lord, bless us, your living temples. Lord, bless us, your living temples that the universal church may grow in unity and faith through our fidelity to the Pope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord bless, bless us, your, your living, living temples, temples, that nations may live in peace and avoid vindictiveness and rivalry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless, bless us, your, your living temples, temples, that those searching for God may find the rock of Peter's faith and the courage of St. John the Baptist. Lord, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless us, your living temples, that we may demonstrate our faith by the way we care for and use this church building. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless us, your living temples, that the dead may become living stones in the eternal temple. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless us, your living temples. Loving Father, you raised the body of your Son, the glorious temple of the resurrection. As his mystical body and temple on earth, 
we offer our prayers to you, hoping to share in the same resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offering made here, and grant that by it those who seek your favor may receive in this place the power of the sacraments and the answer to their prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in your benevolence, you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit, supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year, you sanctify the church, the bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that rejoicing as the mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth, grant, we pray, that by our partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Ang 